Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up my Monogram Creative Console as a control surface for mixing in Logic Pro. Now, if you're looking for a more introductory video on the Monogram Creative Console, you can check out my initial review video where I go over how to set up CCs and I give my full review of the product. To briefly summarize my review, I absolutely love this product. I love the modularity of it. I love the portability of it. I love the form factor. I love the fact that I can pretty much do anything I want with it. It's just a blank slate that I can assign to anything. And after I got my hands on a few extra modules, I started thinking, why not use this as a control surface rather than a MIDI controller? So after some experimentation and research later, I finally figured out how to set all of this up, albeit it is a bit of a complex process, but once you do it the first time, you'll never have to do it again because all of the control surface settings are saved globally in Logic. So once you set it up, you can open up any Logic project and the global control surface settings for the Monogram console will be loaded and you can just start immediately using it, no extra setup required. And before I demonstrate how to set all of this up, first I'll just demonstrate the Monogram console as a control surface in use in Logic. And just a heads up, this video is going to be a long format video. So what I've done is I've left timestamps and chapters down below if you wanna skip around in the video. So right now I have this whole thing set up as an eight channel control surface. So these first eight channels are set up in a fader bank. And then this ninth one I'm saving for synthesizers and plugin controls, although you can incorporate it as part of the fader bank if you wish. Now you can do this with just about any setup, but for my setup, I'm using one orbiter module, three slider modules, three dial modules, and a core module. Now I do have one of the key uh, sort of button modules, although, this I use more for storing key commands, my favorite shortcuts, rather than for mixing. So this is not necessarily a requirement for setting this up as a control surface. So I'm just gonna leave that out for this video. So in my logic project, you can see in the mixer here, there's this yellow bar below the channels. These are the control surface bars, and you can hide and show these by right-clicking or control-clicking on any of the channels and going down to channel strip components control surface bars. I also like to show the track numbers as well. It just helps me out. So what you'll notice here is that the first eight are selected here, and I've assigned the buttons on the main module to bank to the right eight at a time or bank to the left. So that's how I'm banking my controls left and right. So if I have these first eight selected here, I can control the volume of each one just using my faders. If I bank over, I can now control the next set of eight. If I bank over again, I can control the next set of eight as well. Then I can jump back to the first eight and control those again. Additionally, I've set up the rotary encoders as pan knobs, so I have pan control of whatever bank I'm on. Additionally, the rotary knobs also function as buttons. So what I've done is I've set up the rotary knobs when you press them to be solo buttons. So you can just press them to solo or unsolo any of the tracks. So those are the four main mix control surface functions that I need here. I have volume, I have pan, I have solos, and then I have bank left and bank right. Additionally, I've also added the orbiter wheel as sort of a jog wheel control so that I can quickly navigate through my project. And real quick, I just wanna let you know, if you're interested in buying one of these, Monogram has created a special discount code for 15% off. Just type in MTHG15 at checkout and you'll get 15% off your order. I don't get any cut of that. This video is not sponsored in any way. I just really love the Monogram console and figured I'd do a sequel to my initial review video and show you how to use it as a control surface. So next, let's get into the tutorial portion of this video. So if I press Shift Option K to get to my controller assignments dialog, you can see all of this has already been set up in here. What I'm gonna do at this point is I'm just going to delete all of my controller assignments and start from scratch. And another thing I recommend doing before setting this up is going up to Logic Pro Control Surfaces Setup and make sure you don't have any other control surfaces set up. 
So I'm going to go ahead and delete this as well and start completely from scratch. So the, really the very first thing you want to do even before you come into Logic is open up the monogram creator and make sure that every fader, knob, and button has been assigned to an individual CC. I've got the orbiter assigned to MIDI CCs as well as both of the buttons on the main module. I would highly recommend to start somewhere at the end of the sequence of CCs. Remember that continuous controllers or control change messages start at one and they go all the way up to 127, both in their motion, but also in their CC assignment number. So what I've done is I've started at CC 90 and I've gone all the way up to CC 127. Now, if you want a more detailed overview of how to assign all of these, you can go check out my previous video. I'm just gonna sort of skim over this part so we don't spend too much time assigning the CCs. But one thing I didn't demonstrate in my first video was that you can actually change the colors on these. So these last two, which I'm going to be reserving for synthesizer and plug-in controls, and they're not going to be part of the control surface, I can label these a different color. So maybe I'll turn these green instead of this magenta color. And you'll see that even on the hardware itself, it changes color. So that's the very first thing you want to do is make sure you set up a profile in Monogram Creator with all of these mapped to various CCs. So now I can just close this out and then I can start working in Logic. So the first thing I'm gonna do in Logic is go up to Logic Pro, Control Surfaces, Setup. So we're going to borrow one of the Mackie Control Surfaces protocol. So to do this, I'm just gonna to go to New, Install, and then in the window that pops up, just search for MCU and you'll get Mackie Designs MCU Pro. So then I'm just gonna click Add and you'll see it adds the device as a control surface. Now what I'm gonna do is in the input port, I'm gonna set this to monogram core module and the output port can just stay off. Additionally, I can change the color here. What this really does is it changes the color of the control surface bars when those pop up. So I like to set this to a color that's easy to see, something like bright yellow or like sort of like a hot pink. Now, technically speaking, you can actually skip this step and it'll still work. But the reason why we're sort of piggybacking off of the MCU's protocol is just for the control surface bars. If you don't set up a control surface this way, you will not see the control surface bars in the mixer. For some weird reason, you will still see them in the tracks area, but not in the mixer. So that's really the only reason for this step. The next thing I need to do is press Shift Option K to open up the controller assignments dialog. Now remember, I went through and deleted a bunch of stuff, but all this other stuff is popping up. The reason why is I just set up the MCU, so it's imported all of the MCU's controls in here. Now, even if you delete all of these zones, it's still going to show that the MCU is installed. So Logic still thinks this control surface is hooked up. We're just gonna create our own custom controls for it. So to start setting this up, I'm going to Press X to open the mixer. I'm going to press Shift Option K to open up the controller assignments window. Then what I'll do is click Learn Mode. I'll click on the volume, and then I'll move the fader to learn it. Now, if for some reason, this minimum maximum value here doesn't set this to 0 to 127, you may have to set this manually. Now, with Learn Mode still on, I'm going to click on the next volume fader, and then move my next fader, and then just go down the line. Learn number 3. Learn number four, learn number five. And you kind of have to be careful if you accidentally bump one of the other faders, you can cause it to improperly map and that can cause some problems. So those are all learned. Now what's important here is that in the controller assignments window, let me go ahead and turn off learn mode. What's important here is you want all of these to be set to fader bank, channel strip, and then a number. So for my eighth one, this would be channel strip fader bank eight, then channel strip fader bank seven. And what you'll notice is that pretty much all of them get automatically learned that way, except for the very first one. It tries to learn it as an absolute value, a selected track. So all I have to do is change this over to channel strip fader bank one. So channel strip fader bank and then one. Additionally, what you can do is you can select a control and change the name. So I'm going to call this one Fader 1. This one I'll call Fader 2. 
and then just keep going until you have them all labeled. So now I have faders one through eight all labeled. What you'll also see is that pink color show up here in the control surface bars. So this is showing that this is an eight fader bank. So next, what I wanna do is set up my fader bank buttons, and I'm gonna turn on learn mode and then press my left button. Now this you have to set up manually, but it's pretty easy to do. Just go up here to class and set this to control surface group, then change the parameter to fader bank for current view, and then select the bank type by bank. Additionally, down here, you want the value to be 0 to 127. The format should be unsigned. The mode needs to be changed to relative. The feedback needs to be changed to none. And then you need to turn on key repeat. Now, this is going to be bank left, and this one's going to be bank right. Bank right is going to be a positive multiplier to move to the right. So plus one will be moving to the right, and therefore negative one will be moving to the left. So I have to set a multiplier of negative one. So this, I can just name this bank left. So now what I'll do is click learn mode again, click on the right bank button, and I'll set it up the exact same way. I'll call this bank right. I'll change the class to control surface group, set the parameter to fader bank for current view. Bank type is by bank. 0 to 127, unsigned, positive 1, mode is relative, feedback, none, and then turn on key repeat. So now I should be able to come into my mixer here and bank right and bank left. So those pink bars you're seeing below those eight channels is showing that those are the eight channels that are currently being controlled in my eight fader bank. So now if I want to control the next set of eight, you could just click over here and it'll automatically bank over, but you can also use your bank right function. And now I can control these eight faders. And now I can bank over and control these eight faders. Likewise, I can bank back to the left and control the original first eight faders again. So I've got the banking set up. I've got the volume set up. Next, let's talk about the rotary encoders and the buttons that are in these rotary encoders. The problem with the encoder knobs is that there is a function for turning, and then there's another function for pressing. If you just want to learn these as pan controls and you don't want to use the button function at all, you can skip this section and move on to the next section where I set up the pan knobs. The reason why I'm setting up the buttons first is it can make it really tricky if you have CCs assigned to these for pan, and then you're trying to go back in and assign the button presses. So actually what I normally do is I will clear these, then go to customize, then go to press, then go to MIDI mode, and assign a MIDI CC for each of the press functions first without assigning a turn function. So let's see, I had this on 90 through 98. So I'll start here on 99 and I'll move all the way up. So this first one will be press, 99, then set the color you want, and click done. So right now for this first one, even though you can see it moving, there is no CC control for turning it. There's only a CC control for pressing it at this point. So what I'm going to do off screen is I'm going to assign all of these to press controls without any turn control. So off screen, you can see I assigned all these through 99 through 105. I left one more just to show you one more time. So again, double click customize, press, completely ignore the turn command, press, MIDI mode, set this to the CC. I'm going to go with 106. I'll set my color and then click done. So now all eight of these are assigned to CCs for their press control, but no CC has been assigned to their turn control. Okay, so next I'm going to set up the solos, and this is a bit tricky. What you're going to do is select any channel that's not in the first eight channels, and it's going to automatically bank over, but then bank back to the first eight channels and just let this channel be selected over here. Then what you're going to do is click Learn Mode. Then I'll click on the Solo button on the first channel, and then I'll press the Encoder button on the Monogram Controller. Now with learn mode still on, I'll click on the second solo button, then click on my second button, and then just continue all the way down 
until all eight of these are assigned. And you have to be really careful not to bump into any of your other controls or it can mess everything up. So now that all of those are learned, I'll just turn off learn mode. And what you'll see is it automatically sets these up for channel strip fader bank one parameter solo. It's tricky because you can't just select a parameter here. You have to learn it. So that's one. This is automatically set this to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you didn't select another channel outside of the bank, whatever channel was selected would not map properly and you'd have to delete that control and then go back and remap it. Logic's controller assignment mapping is a little wonky, but uh, like I said, once you set this up once, you never have to worry about it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rename all of these solo one, solo two, and so forth and so on, just like I did with the faders. Now, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that with these solo buttons in Logic's controller assignments window, you're gonna set these to scaled automatic. The min max should be zero to 127, format is unsigned, multiply is one. But in this setting, you'll see there's sort of more momentary controls. I have to be pressing down in order to solo that track. What I actually want this to be is a toggle control where it stays soloed. In order to do this in the creator app, you wanna make sure that all of these are set up as toggle mode rather than momentary mode. So I'll just make sure I do that for all of these right now. And here's the last one, press toggle. So now when I go back into Logic, I should be able to press to turn on solo, press again to turn off the solo. So now I've got solos set up on all eight channels and I have volume faders set up on all eight channels. Okay, next let's set up some pan knobs. What I'm gonna do now is set up CC controls for all eight of these for the turn function. So these go up to CC 106. So I'm just gonna start at CC 107. So right here, I'll just double click, go to turn, go to MIDI mode, and set this up as 107 and absolute. It's very important that this is set up as absolute. So we have two CCs assigned to this knob now. 107 is the turn function, 99 is the press function. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off screen for the rest of these. Okay, so I've got all of these set up to alternate CCs for turn. I'll just set up this very last one, turn, MIDI mode, I'm on number 114 and make sure to set it to absolute. So now they're all set up. Now I'm ready to assign the pan knobs. So just like I did before, make sure you select another channel that's outside of the bank. Otherwise you'll have issues. So go ahead and open up the controller assignments window again. And this time I'm going to click learn mode, click on the first pan knob and then move the first encoder. Then I'll click on the next one move it. Okay, so if you run into this problem where learn mode turns off the first time, that's no big deal. Just turn learn mode back on, click on the next one, move number two, and then you should be able to just move sequentially without having to turn learn mode on back on. Again, I don't know why Logic's uh, controller assignments are so wonky. I really wish they would fix that, but it is what it is. I deal with it. And like I said, once you set it up once, you don't really have to worry about it ever again. Okay, so I've learned all eight of these. I'll turn learn mode off. Now I need to go through each of these and make sure these are set up as channel strip, fader bank, the number, and then pan this time. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And for these, you wanna make sure that the minimum and maximum is zero to 127. I think it only messed up the very first one. Yeah, the rest of them are fine. Now you don't wanna use scaled mode because this can cause some issues if you bank from one set of channels over to another, the encoders can remember their previous position. So what you wanna do is change this from scaled to direct mode. So you're directly controlling each of the pan knobs regardless of where the previous position was. So I'll just go ahead and change all of these from scaled to direct. Now, no matter what channel I have selected or what fader bank I have selected, these should always work. Okay, so I've got all of the volume pan and solo controls set up as well as the bank controls. The next thing I wanna set up is the orbit module. Now I'm not gonna use the tilt function for anything, I'm just gonna leave that alone 
as an assignable MIDI control for something else later. If I wanted to use it for pitch bend or modulation wheel or some other control, I'm just going to leave that alone. The orbiter, though, I'm going to use a sort of a jog wheel scrolling or scrubbing function within the tracks area. Now, there's actually two ways you can set this up. However, I prefer one over the other, and they both have their advantages and drawbacks. So I'll show you both, and you can choose which one you prefer. Go into the Creator app, double-click on the Orbiter, make sure you go to the Turn function, and instead of using MIDI mode, use Keyboard mode. What you can do is you can make a left turn be the comma key command, or the left uh, less than greater than bracket, and then the right turn is going to be the period, or the right greater than or less than bracket. What this will do is it'll essentially take over the key command that's on those two keys, where you can jump forward and back by one bar at a time, but you're just assigning that to the orbiter wheel. And this is a really nice, smooth way to sort of jump around and make sure that you're snapping to the bar lines. That's the best part about it. The problem with this is because it's sending a key command, if you're in any sort of app where you can type text, or even if I'm in the notepad, for example, I made a few uh, notes here for myself. If I move this left or right, it's just going to create a bunch of commas and periods. So while I like the way this one functions better within Logic, that part of it is the reason why I don't use it, because I sometimes will be typing on the internet and I might accidentally bump it, and all of a sudden I typed in a bunch of periods or commas, or if I'm working on a spreadsheet or if I'm working in a Word document or something, I don't want that sort of thing to happen. So instead, I'm going to set this up as a CC. So I'm going to go back into Creator, and instead of using keyboard mode, I'll use MIDI mode. I'll assign this to an available CC in absolute mode. And then back in Logic in the controller assignments window, I'll just click Learn Mode, turn that, and then we have to set this up manually. So you're going to set this to Class Global. Set the parameter to Playhead. By the way, there's a few different playhead options here. The first three playhead beats and timecode all do the exact same thing. When you scroll down, make sure that the uh, minimum maximum value is set to 0 to 127. And then everything else can stay the same. Format can be unsigned, multiply of 1, and then mode is scaled automatic. And now what I can do is I can use this to scrub around or scroll around with the playhead. So it functions sort of like a jog wheel for navigation, which I really like. It makes it really easy to jump to different sections of your project. The only downside is unlike the previous method, it doesn't snap to bar lines. I think what it's doing is it's taking the length of your project and just dividing it up into 127 distinct points. And that's how it's getting its positional data. Um, that's my understanding of how it's working, but I could be wrong. What I recommend doing and what I probably should have done at the very beginning of this video is create a new zone and then put all of your monogram controls in this zone or all of your control surface controls at least. So what I'm going to do is just go to no zone, select all of these, hold shift, press command C to copy, and then in the monogram CC zone, just command V to paste. Just be very careful not to delete anything like I did, and I had to go back and reassign all of these off screen uh, while making the video. Now, just note that if you put these controls in the monogram CC zone, they will also show up in the no zone zone. If you delete any of the no zone controls, it will also delete them from the monogram CC control. And that's pretty much it. I've got my whole control surface set up. So one more time, just to demonstrate, I've got my orbiter jog wheel here. I've got my bank controls. I can bank left and right. I can adjust my volume faders for that bank. I can adjust my pan controls for the bank. I can solo tracks. I can unsolo tracks. I can bank over, control a new set of volume faders, control a new set of solos, and so forth and so on. So that's how you can set up your Monogram Creative Console as a mixing control surface in Logic Pro. Don't forget the guys at Monogram made a special discount code for 15% off. Just remember to type in MTHG15 at checkout. And I even saw that they have a new charcoal color coming out soon. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.